Welcome back. Uh, we're going to finish up with case number four, uh, which Dr. Bagg is going to present for us. Thank you, Bill. Uh, so this last case is of a 53-year-old female who has an elevated white cell count that was detected incidentally, presumably at the time of a routine physical examination, a not uncommon presentation of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. She was noted to be hypertensive, has a small lymph, lymph node in the left axilla, and the laboratory findings show a marked absolute lymphocytosis with preservation of hemoglobin and platelet counts and an LDH that is within normal limits. Flow cytometry shows an immunophenotype as one would expect in chronic lymphocytic leukemia with co-expression of CD25 and CD23 by the presumably monoclonal B cells. The cells are also noted to be CD38 positive, which historically has been considered a poor prognosticator. Immunoglobulin gene heavy chain region very, uh, sequencing shows that this region is mutated. This CLL has transited the germinal center and the presence of a somatic hypermutation uh, is prognostically relevant. Fish shows trisomy 12. The bone marrow shows 86% involvement and the patient was monitored uh, at first, but then she became symptomatic. Repeat fish, which is important to repeat, remained uh, showing a trisomy 12. The white cell count had increased to 250,000, and both uh, hemoglobin and platelet counts have now dropped. The lymph node uh, that was one by one centimeter has now enlarged to that of four by three centimeters. She was treated with FCR and achieved a complete remission after six cycles, but remains MRD positive. So this is a 53-year-old female uh, with uh, relatively good uh, prognostic features. Uh, maybe you can comment on the diagnostic workup and uh, the, the prognostic features that this patient does have in particular. So, so as alluded to uh, when I was presenting the case, the expression of CD38 is considered to be a poor prognostic variable from an immunophenotypic point of view. Whether that affects therapy, uh, I'll leave up to you to discuss. Mutation of the immunoglobulin heavy chain gene uh, indicating this CLL cell has transit of the germinal center, typically associated with a good prognosis. Fish revealing a trisomy 12. Trisomy 12, of course, historically the most frequent abnormality detected in CLL patients by cytogenetics, but uh, relegated to perhaps third position when uh, fish is used. Importantly, uh, notable by its absence, is conventional karyotypic analysis by cytogenetics genetics, which could have prognostic import. Trisomy 12 detected by fish is considered, in most instances, I believe to be neutral prognostically, although there may be some clinical associations with it. Um, and that's all the information we have. We do not have a targeted mutation analysis, which I think would be important nowadays in all patients with CLL, in particular to look at TP53 mutations, but also to look at a handful of other genes such as Notch1, SF3B1, Berk3, ATM, and a few others. Uh, can you comment on CD200? Sometimes we get CD200 on our, uh, on our phenotyping reports. What's the relevance of CD200? So CD200 is a relatively new marker that can help facilitate the diagnosis of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Uh, CD200 is uh, reported to be ex expressed fairly exclusively on CLL as compared with its mimics, in particular mantle cell lymphoma when in leukemic phase. There are, however, recent reports of CD200 being expressed on indolent mantle cell lymphomas, uh, those that lack SOX11 expression, for example. So I think one needs to be careful, but it is nevertheless a useful marker for diagnosing chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Remember also, in addition to the indolent mantle cell lymphomas that can express a CD200, hairy cell leukemia, which ought not to be in the morphologic and immunophenotypic differential diagnosis of CLL, can also express a CD200. And it, together with other novel markers like LEF1, used by immunohistochemistry, are newer tools that we have to distinguish CLL from its potential mimics. Noting that usually CD5 and CD23 expression are useful, but also looking at the intensity of a variety of other immunophenotypic markers by flow cytometry, such as CD20, surface immunoglobulin, CD22, 
CD79B low intensity as compared with all uh, other small B cell uh, neoplasms that can spill over into the blood.